right, we got volume. We're live. We got volume. We got volume. And we're live, live, live. I think we're live. We are. We got some eyeballs. We have some eyeballs. We have some people watching us. So what we need to do is our annual, our weekly tech check. If you can hear us and you can see us, give us a thumbs up or some sort of indicator so that we know that you're out there and you're listening. And then we're going to get started. I do have some kind of exciting news about a few things um, about what's back in stock. I got an email this morning from Crafters Companion and there's some new stuff that's in. And here we go. Katie says, I can hear you and see you on both Facebook and YouTube. Woo -woo. Okay. So quickly before, while we're waiting for people to jump on, I think if you're on the Crafters Companion Totally Tiffany email list, Today, you got a notification about this item. I'll just talk about for a momento. Um, so this is the new magnetic overlay, magnetic design tool and ruler for your uh, nine by 11 rotating design board line. So, <laughs> so what's good about this? It helps you even everything out if you don't knock it around, right? So it's a great way to line things up. Obviously, same thing as the big one, right? It's just for the nine by 11 versus 12 by 12. So a lot of you have it for the 12 by 12, which is also available on the magnetic design tool um, and ask for it for the nine by 11. One of the things that I really like about it for the nine by 11, oh, um, because as you know, I mess up my rotating design boards. I do everything on them and they get gouged and they get paint bumps and glitter bumps and all that stuff. I have one that I don't. Um, so like this one, well, it's kind of hard to see, but there's all kinds of like bumps on it from paint and glue and that type of thing. And so it makes it difficult to use for anything that's not messy. And then when I got this the other day, I thought, oh yeah, I can just put that on top of my messy one and now my messy surface is flat again. So I could, if I wanted to stamp, you know, one of the beauties of the rotating design board is that um, being able to rotate around and, you know, get that random pattern when you're stamping or something, or if you're, you know, brushing a stencil or whatever it is, so you can really get that ink into the stencil and all that kind of stuff. So um, I was excited because my, my 9 by 11 board here is... It's not usable for that kind of thing because I have it all covered in paint and such. The other question I get all the time is how do I stand mine up? So if you wanted to work with it up at an angle in front of you with the magnet on it, I just bought this at one of the big box stores back in the frame department. Just a little um, easel. So, okay, let's get started. Blah, 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 blah. London, can you turn on the AC? Because with the lights on in here, it is now getting... What is this? 76 degrees. Do you want to lower? Yeah, probably drop it a little bit. All right, let's go. Let's go, everybody. Okay, get organized challenge number eight. This is our last challenge of this series. It's also the shortest challenge of this series. It's kind of a little bit melancholy, right? We're wrapping up. This is always my favorite time of the year doing the GOC. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about traveling with your supplies. And um, I'm going to start with this week's winner. Boop, boop. Uh, Lori Sones Patterson. I'm going to read her post here. And she these are, these are from Facebook. I'm pretty sure there's three pictures. So she says, progress post. I'm so glad I accepted the challenge of getting caught up on organizing my kids, my four kids' mementos. The avalanche of runner's bibs. Just how many of those do I need to save? Tickets, programs, award certificates, varsity letters, and more have languished on my one of my desks for months. Now are the appropriate now are in the appropriate memento keepers along with oodles of previously filed memorabilia. And it was so much fun to take this trip down memory lane on Mother's Day. Perfect timing. Now to enjoy my reward. So a couple of things. Um, Katie, who picks the winner uh, from everybody, doesn't even probably know this, but well, first thing, happy Mother's Day, belated Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. Um, I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. And, uh, but the other, and, and that is fun. I also was organizing mementos and had that same sort of experience 
um, this last week. What, what she shows in her picture are the old Memento Keeper project planners, and we haven't had them for a couple of years, but guess what? Ooh, they were, they are coming back. So you are, it's funny that this was the thing that Katie chose. I don't even think she knows this. Uh, they are coming back. I was working with them this weekend. They've been changed just slightly. The pockets on the inside have been swapped out. Matter of fact, I'll show you one again. Maybe I'm going to get in some trouble. London, can you hand me one of those memento keepers off the paper cart? If you are using the paper cart, the memento keepers do fit on the shelves of the paper cart. When do we not get in trouble? I know we're always in trouble. So this is what Lori's talking about. Now, the old ones had a black cover uh, and they had a little button on the front. This one has an elastic band across the front. But what they are designed to do is give you these big bulky pockets um, for storing all of your mementos. So the interior has been replaced with project planner pages. It used to have just big like 12 by 12 pockets in the middle. It's a standard three ring size. So you can add other pages, dividers, whatever you want to it, but it makes the perfect well, this one is my son's senior year. So this is his cap and gown over here. That's how big the pockets gust it out. This is his um, uh, varsity letters uh, or certificates and his graduation stuff. And then all the little mementos from his senior year are right here. So the Memento Keeper project planners are all coming back in stock and they, anytime, they'll be back anytime. So you guys just got kind of a sneak peek. Here you go, Poe, you can have that back. Um, but funny that that was what Katie chose um, as the winner and, and those are coming back. So that's awesome. All right. Um, one question that ha that I get asked regularly as we're wrapping up the Get Organized Challenge is, what do I do? I'm not finished. And most people, especially if it's your first time through, you're not going to be finished because it took years to get our craft rooms to the state they were in. It's going to take longer than a few hours each week over eight weeks to get them all dialed in. So the Get Organized Challenge videos and, and worksheets and handouts, all that stuff stays live on our website all the time. And then every time we teach a new class, we update the videos, we update the handouts, whatever it is. But for the rest of the year, you can refer back to any one of the classes, either on YouTube or right there on the website and rewatch them and get re-motivated. And if you're looking for somebody to buddy up with, to partner with, because it's easier when people are doing things together, all you have to do is ask in the Get Organized Challenge group on Facebook, hey, who wants to do paper challenge with me or whatever? And then you'll get somebody that's also needing to tweak their paper or whatever. So um, you can still do it. You can still work through it. We do. I'm going to do mini classes periodically throughout the year on Tuesdays. We're all like, go, oh, okay, we're going to do power paper sorting today. Or we're going to talk photos. So watch your email for what's happening on the upcoming Tuesday lives. And, and you may want to jump in for one of those as well. Um, boy, I, I have another little spoiler thing coming up. Oh. We're, we're going to do a mini, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not. I, I don't know. On so many levels, if you, um, if you subscribe to Creative Scrapbook or Magazine, I'm working on my fall article right now. And that is going to be a 12 week get organized challenge, mini kind of mini challenge. Um, so you'll see that in the magazine it comes in September, but so right about the time you're ready to, you've done with summer and you're ready to jump back in, you'll see that in, in the magazine. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to see that. that counts as a trailer. That's a trailer. Okay. My son's saying that's a trailer. So we're good with it. All right. So let me just see here what Katie's got going. All right. Okay. So what do we do? What are we going to do this, this week? We are, yes. Quick question before you move on. Does the Memento Keeper fit in a Calyx Cube storage unit? I think they're just a hair too tall for the Calyx storage unit, sadly. Um, they Just like our other binders, London's gonna try it right now, but I'm gonna say, it's. I bet it's just, because in order to get that, um, yeah, London's trying to put one in there right now, but I'm gonna say, most likely. Ooh, it's tight. It's very tight. Mm -hmm. So, actually, now it's been here with my Yeah, he, the bottom of the binder kind of bends in on that. So it stands straight up, but if you had like two of them, you could probably lean them in there. Mm, he says you can lean them slightly and they will 
they will fit in there. So no, they do fit on the paper cart on both the top and bottom shelves of the paper cart though. So if you have the paper cart, that's a great place to store them. Maybe you could put them on top of your calyx with a couple of bookends that would work also. But in order to get the interior pockets big enough and then have enough edge around the binder so that things aren't sticking out, they're just a little bit too tall. So I wish, I wish I could fit everything in the calyx. That would be amazing because it's such a great storage system for crafting, isn't it? So, all right, you I bet you can't lay it down either because they're the same tall height and width. They're a different depth, so no. Okay, so traveling with your supplies, what are you gonna do before you go to a big event? The very first thing you wanna do is gather, that's what we say every week, this time you're gonna gather information. Because before you pack up and head to an event, you need to know what's already there, right? Especially if you're going to something that you paid for, a lot of times the pay, what you're paying for is not only your table, but you're paying for uh, the machines, the dies, the equipment that they are bringing for you so that you don't have to bring your own Thing. So the first thing you want to do is gather that information from the crop, who's ever hosting the crop, what, what are they providing? And then generally we're going to these type of crafting events with someone else. And so you want to gather information from them or trade information with them as well, because there's no reason for everybody to bring everything. If somebody's bringing a cricket or somebody's bringing a Gemini, everybody doesn't need to bring their own, right? So unless you just got your little guy, which is perfect for, I mean, they're pretty small and easy, but again, you don't need to bring everything. So, you know, share around the responsibility of who's bringing what. And there's always someone in every craft group who has everything and who loves to bring everything. It brings that person joy to be able to share their toys and tools with the rest of us. So if there's somebody in your group who likes to do that, let them do that. Let them bring those things for you to use because they'll be happy that they can help you out and share their goodies with you. So that's your first step is to gather those things up. Um, and then you also want to know while you're there, how many hours are you actually going to be working, right? Because if you go to a two day crop or a three day crop, you're not cropping for all 72 hours. You're cropping, you're shopping, you're eating you're sleeping. So before you start loading up thinking I've got 72 hours of craft time, you really want to kind of dial that into how many hours am I actually crafting and what are my goals? What do I think I can accomplish in that much time? Because you want to pack what you can actually do versus everything that you have in your craft room, right? So the more stuff you bring, the less likely, the less you're going to get done. I promise you that. If you, if you used to have to spend all of your time at a crop digging and searching through multiple boxes and bins and totes, you're gonna be less likely to get things done. So if your goal is to get things done at the crop, then you really wanna dial in what you're taking with you so that you're kind of focused. So the beauty of what we've been through here in the last um, eight weeks is that it's gonna be so much easier for you to focus, to dial in on exactly what you're gonna work on. That's your next thing. The next thing you need to do, what are you gonna work on? Are you gonna do some general scrapbooking or are you gonna do some other type of project, right? Maybe you're a part of Stephanie Bernard's home decor uh, group and you're gonna take that to work on. Maybe you're gonna work on your Christmas cards. Whatever it is, once you decide what you're gonna do, then that's gonna dictate to you, what do you need to take, right? For the purpose of this class, I'm gonna say, most of us are gonna go working on card making or scrapbooking, mostly scrapbooking, and what do we need to take to be prepared? So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is create a list of all the things that you need that you need and want to take with you. And I do what I call an out and back list, and there's a copy of it on the GOC page on the website. This is everything I'm taking out with me tool-wise, and then when I pack it back up in my tote, I check off this side of the list, right? So I know I'm not leaving scissors or a ruler or my, my big tape runner or something, or that I didn't lend something to somebody else at the table and it got in their tote instead of getting back in mine. So it just gives you an easy out and back list. You can also, I always think I should add one more column to this, like, did I use it? Because I may have packed all these things, but I didn't use them and I don't really need to bring them to an event. One of the things about um, what we've done, especially with cataloging, is that you, you don't necessarily need to now bring all of your stamps or dies or punches with you to an event, but you can still use them. So one of the things 
that I always have is a little sticky notes, right? And then if I work a layout and I think I want to finish it with this punch when I get home or this wood mounted stamp that I didn't bring with me, I can select it out of my catalog that I have with me. And then I can just put a note on this a sticky note on the page that says, finish this birthday layout with the wood mounted stamp number, you know, 423 gift boxes. And I can do everything on that layout, but I don't have to bring all of my inks, all my embossing powders, my heat tool, um, and the stamps to finish it. I'm gonna maximize the use of those tools, but I don't have to actually haul everything with me to an event. So what you might take, where you might take more things to a two or three day event, the, again, taking everything with you, especially to a shorter event is really cumbersome. Not only do you have to pack it all up, but you have to put it all away. And that is one of the biggest problems that we have is we haul it out and then we have to deal with putting it away. So bringing sticky notes with you and your catalog is gonna save you time and it's going to expose you to the full range of tools that you have right so what you may think oh i'm going to work on birthday pages so i'm just going to take these two gift box stamps and this party hat stamp you may have dozens of other birthday stamps at home that would work perfectly but you didn't bring them if you have your catalog you can go oh, i'm going to finish this page with this and then all you need to carry with you are your little sticky notes right all right my phone is going off here let's see um, uh, Doreen Jansen says, I love to hear about your spoilers and Joy Gardner also love the spoilers. Get, so, got some more. Well, funny. You should ask. I do have a look. It's kind of a spoiler. I have to wait till the end though. So you have to stick with me while we get through this. Okay. So what you're going to do, you're going to gather information from the crop host and from your friends that you're going with. Then you're going to decide what you want, um, to work on, and then you're gonna start planning what you're packing up. And my advice to you is to, um, well, first, I'm gonna share with you Jana's list, which is also, so Jana submitted this to us uh, years ago during the GOC. Why am I sharing this giant list with you? Because it's really well put together. You can download it, you can copy it or, and change it to match your whatever you're taking. The thing that I loved about this list and the way that she did it, because I'm an organization nerd, is that she organized it by location. Where are you getting these things from? So it's her whole packing list for a weekend crop. And then um, it also has just her, her crafting stuff. But I thought it was a great way to organize a list by room. This is what I need from the bedroom. This is what I need from the bathroom. This is what I need from my craft room. And then if your craft room is organized sort of in stations to do it that way as well, this is what I need from my cutting area. This is what I need from paper or whatever it is and go around and collect everything that way. So um, that list is also available for download on the website if you don't already have it. Um, or you want to take a look at it and create your own. I thought it was a very, it was a brilliant way. So I'm glad we can share that with you. Okay. So you're going to create that list. Um, and then you're going to start gathering your supplies together and laying everything out. So when I pack for anything, I lay things out the same way I would if I was going on a trip and I pack in reverse. So when I'm loading up for a crop, I think, how am I going to set up my table when I get there? What things do I need out first in order to make room for other things and that type of thing? So if you think about that as you're packing your tote for a crop, put everything in the bottom that you need to pull out last and the thing. So a lot of us bring little shelves or little things to set things on or whatever. You want to make sure those are on the top so that you can stack, bring those out first and then bring out the things that go into that type of uh, storage that you might be bringing for your desktop. So um, it's really helpful to have an empty paper storage box or paper handler type box available when you are, um, sorry, I'm, my thing is beeping here and then I just lost my screen, uh, paper handler type box. So when you're loading things into your tote, and we'll talk about totes in a minute, um, you have that nice vertical space that you can add things into, whether it's buddy bags or rulers or anything that you're trying to keep straight up and down right into your tote. And there's some photos of that on the website too. Uh, Sue Rain says, I recently went to a crop and used the sticky notes and it worked wonderfully. I did not take, I did take a few of my stickers, but really, um, but really didn't use that much. Was able to take a lot less and got 21 layouts. And 
That is awesome. Um, it really does. It, the catalog work that you all have done, taking that catalog allows you to at least mentally access everything you've got without taking all of it with you, right? Using that sticky note. So thank you so much for sharing that, Sue. That is awesome. It does really simplify the process. One of the reasons that people told me they weren't attending crops and classes is because it was too cumbersome to pack everything up and take it with them. It took so long um, to pull everything out, pack it up, go get there, bring it all out there, put it all the way there, come back and then put it all away. It was just overwhelming. And so after taking this challenge, hopefully that's really going to be streamlined for you. I'm going to show you kind of quickly what I do or what I would recommend um, doing when you go to an event. Um, but the, the most important things are dialing in your project, what you're going to work on, and then only taking that what you need. And some people kind of, um, there's like a mental block on it, like what if I finish everything? Well, you could figure out how many pages you can do in two or three days of cropping realistically. Maybe you're going to do 10 a day and then add another 20% so that you have enough project stuff to do 12 a day and then you'll be fine. You'll have, you, you won't finish everything, but you'll feel comfortable with that, that I'm going to have everything I need to keep busy. I'm not sure I've ever met anybody at a crop who said to me, I finished everything that I brought with, I had it. I got everything done and I didn't have anything to do um, at a crop. So I've been to many, many crops. I mean, we did somewhere between 12 and 22 uh, shows a year and there's crops at all of them. So I've had a fair amount of exposure and that has not, I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying no one's ever said it to me. Mostly what people say to me is I'm overwhelmed when I get to a crop. How do I dial that in and get more done when I'm there? And you guys have done the work in the last eight weeks to make that happen. Okay, uh, packing in reverse. Um, all right, what, what do I use? I, I, I use a scrap rack, obviously. So if I'm going to a big event, I'm gonna take my scrap rack travel base with me. If you're unfamiliar with a travel base, um, but you're using a scrap rack, someone mentioned it last week, I think. Um, it is a base no spinders and just the wings it folds totally flat goes into my tote and then i pull the spinders off my big unit and just take what i need when i get to the crop i set my scrap rack on the lid of my tote and add the spinders to it that i brought with me so why why do you need a travel base because if you want to set up multiple spinders, it makes it really easy. Is it 100% necessary? No, it's purely a convenience thing, um, but that is what, what a travel base is and how they work. Now, if you're just going for a shorter term or really focused, um, I'm gonna take a few things with me, you know it already. I'm gonna take my craft and carry workstation. So when I was talking about uh, packing in reverse, this is something that would be on the top of my tote. So I could pop this up and set it up on my workstation. I'm starting to, you can see, I'm starting to build my barrier against the people that I craft with who we call creepers, who we all have our own little space at a crop to, to use. And they sort of creep into your space from whatever direction they can. So I've got my craft and carry workstation. Of course, I'm going to take my pop-up trash can and throw that on the floor next to me. Okay, here's kind of my, um, here's my kind of spoiler alert. There is a bunch of stuff coming back into the warehouse tomorrow. So hopefully by the end of the week, all of these things that have been out of stock, the ditto bag and the binder among them will be back and available. And I probably shouldn't say this at all because I totally don't have permission. I don't even... I have gotten response one on it, but I did ask if there could be a special bonus coupon for these two items because they have been out of stock for so long and we're talking about them this week. So watch your GOC email and um, we'll see if we can't get a little something extra in there. That'd be awesome. Okay. So what do I, so I've got this, this is going on the top of my tote. I'm going to throw this on the ground, pop it up and throw it next to me. I've got my ditto bag. Now, if you're using a rotating design board, if you're traveling with a rotating design board, um, I guess I don't really need to take that off, but you can put your ditto bag on your rotating design board to save that space and then access it both ways. Or as you know, or most of you already know the beauty of the, um, 
ditto bag is that it splits open, again, becoming part of the barricade to mark off your space. What's the difference? This is a regular question people ask me. What is the difference between this and this? Why do I need both of these? This is for your everyday, all the time tools, right? The things that you use constantly, your bone folder, your scissors, your ripping rulers, that type of thing. I've got all my adhesives in there. I've got sprayers and, and a t several different paper trimmers that I love. They're all in there, kind of all the basics. I've got two buddy bags in here. One of them, there are two Teresa buddy bags. This one has glitter in it. This one has glitter, the other one has glitter glue. Sorry, I'm trying to do this backwards. Glitter glue and re-ink or size bottles in it. So um, depending on what you're working on and what you need, you can put those right in the front of it. This is what I'm going to use as I'm working. So I'm going to pull out the paper that I'm using. I'm going to put the dies or the stamps that I'm using, anything particular um, supply-wise that I'm using on that project, it's all going to go right here. Special pen colors, uh, maybe decorative edge scissors that I'm going to use on that project. So this is what I'm working out of putting scraps into. Put the photos are in there in my five by seven pockets. The photos are in this ready to go. So I can keep my workstation clean, but have access to the actual items that I'm designing with versus tools that I'm all the time are in this on my desk at home or whatever. So of course my ditto tool bag is going with me, most likely with me. And the ditto tool bag is gonna go in my lowest toad. So if you're unfamiliar, right, the one of the birthrights for Lois is that she can fit the ditto. And then, if I don't get the ditto hung up on the pocket here, and then as I'm traveling in and out of the event, instead of having to carry my ditto by the handle, I can now throw the shoulder straps on and that's kind of the beauty of adding her. Okay, so basic tools, basic workspace organization. Now, the Craft and Carry workstation is uh, out of stock on our website right now. It's out of stock at HSN, but I do believe I could be wrong. I do believe Stephanie Bernard, Stamps of Life, still has the Craft and Carry workstation available in two colors. I think she's got pink and black. Stephanie's pink and black. Um, Monica Garcia says, I was so organized at one of my retreats that I finished 33 pages in two days. Amazing. Thanks to Tiffany's products and classes. Woo woo. 33 pages in two days has got to be close to a record. Maybe we should have a contest for that. Um, Katie, I think that would be really fun. Now that we're going back to hopefully soon, I don't, uh, being able to go out and do things with people, hopefully, um, yeah, we should have a little contest once things get rolling again, I'll put it on the list and like who can do the most pages, show us your crop space, tell us how many pages you did and then we'll have a contest, that'll be fun. Okay, my little, do you guys like that you're, here we are at class and then I just get some wild idea, start fleshing it out in front of you, sorry about that, but I get excited about stuff. Okay, this is the Craft and Carry binder. Um, now, this is where everything sort of comes together. So. Uh, the big pocket on the front is designed for a bigger paper trimmer because it won't fit inside the binder. But if you were just going to a, a afternoon event, um, you could probably get almost everything you needed into your craft and carry binder. And I would still take my workstation because I don't have mine loaded because I have this, but on the inside of the craft and carry binder, there are pockets that are gusseted and they have a reinforcement at the bottom. And then you've got pen loops and tool loops in here as well. If I'm going to an event and I am working on travel, right? What am I going to take with me? I'm going to pull my travel section off my scrap rack and put that into my binder. And I've got all my things, this is the big money. This is, this is the money shot. Is that what they call it? This is where all your hard work comes together because you no longer have to go, I need travel, you know, stickers and I need travel die cuts and I need travel embellishments and I need, you know, travel washi tape, right? This, 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 as you're rounding all these things up to work on your travel pages. Previously, you'd have to remember what you had and where it was. 
Now all of your things are right here. So you can literally take everything you have for travel and get out the door with it. Boom. S seconds, right? Pull it off your scrap rack, put it in your binder. And you, not only that, not only is it fast, not only is it easy, you have the confidence when you go, yeah, I have all my travel stuff. I grab my travel section off my scrap rack, put it in the binder. I've got it all. When you get home, you're just going to pull that section off your, out of your binder. If you are, are unfamiliar with the scrap rack, I probably should also show you what I'm talking about when I say pull it off. So the three ring sections are on hook and loop fabric. So on your scrap rack that's sitting on the base unit at your house, you just pull it off pop it in the binder and there's room for two or three spinders, the three ring sections in your binder, depending on how full they are. But then on the, on the other side, I've also got my project planner with all of the, um, everything laid out and ready to go. So when we talked about mementos and project planning last week, this is all right here. So now I have all my travel supplies, all my planned, project things right here. All I need to take with me are tools and a rainbow of paper. That's it. And I'm done. I literally in within with this and a, and a paper handler, these things I have here, I could do this entire album. That's not a full album, but it's probably two dozen pages and I'm doing pages for myself and for both the boys albums as well, all at the same time. So everything is right there. Which brings me to another question that came in after last week. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the gal's name that sent it in. Um, what do I do with finished pages? Because I like to scrap, I like to keep my albums in chronological order. Um, and how she said, so does she, but it's sometimes it's cumbersome to, because you do pages out of order because I also like to work on whatever I want to work on. I don't like to stay in order while I'm working. And what is the answer? How do you avoid that having to rearrange your album? There is no answer. There is no solution to that. I've tried everything. I've tried leaving blank um, sleeves in the album thinking I'm going to fill that in. And well, then I inevitably leave three sleeves for an event that I only did two pages for, or I leave you know, five sleeves for an event I did six pages for. And if I'm doing a double page spread, I want to keep those together. So how do I do all that? And there's really no easy answer. I mean, I have literally um, done a double page spread and then whatever I needed to put in before that was going to interrupt that double page and move, you know, one back to back, which of course you don't want because you have that look where they all go together. So I literally created a, just a page a nothing page. It's just a fun snap, what I call a snapshot page in front of that. So I could keep those together, but there is no solution to having to rearrange your pages. If you're not staying in strict chronological order, which most of us don't. The other thing that I do is when I'm doing something like this, like this travel series where it's going to, or I know it's going to be a dozen or 15 pages. I don't put any of them in my script, in my um, scrapbook until all of them are done. So I just keep some 12 by 12 um, pockets. I ripped my thing there, let's see. In the back. So as I finish something like this, I just put them into those 12 by 12 uh, super size single pages. And then when I'm done, then I lay them all out in the album the way that they're supposed to go. So there's, there is no perfect solution. And remember, we don't need perfect. Perfect is the enemy of good. You need a good solution, not a perfect solution. So, all right. So your goals this week, what are they? What are your goals this week? Uh, you need to find a tote that you can dedicate to, um, to just going to crops if that's something you want to do. The reason I'm recommending that is because it's easier to have a crop tote that's only a crop tote. So you're lo loading and unloading less things in and out of it. So if it's possible, find a tote that you love. Personally, I like totes that are more open. I and mean, you can look at what we've done in the past that we don't have any available on the site right now. And they're just open because then you can load whatever you want in. The more pockets and zippers and doodads and things that you have, the more likely it is you're going to stuff something in a hole and then not see it. So I'm all about 
how visible is it? How accessible is it? And then using the things that you have, buddy bags dropped in vertically or paper handlers dropped in vertically, binders, you're, everything very accessible versus having to unzip and un, you know, undo things to find what you're looking for. So that's always key for me when I'm, when I'm choosing something, but I like the big open totes. Create a packing list. You can create the in and out packing list and or the Jana's system packing list where you go uh, room by room or area by area in your craft room. Um, I, and then also I would add that, you know, in used or out used returned so that you, you're not bringing things that you don't use. And also you can add to that list. What do you wish you had with you? What are, what's the thing that you forgot? So make sure that you actually take the list with you to the event, not just use it to pack and then leave it at home because you can add to it as you're there, right? At or cross things off as well. Um, decide how much you can do in an hour at a crop. Add 20 or 25% to that if you're worried about getting too much done. And then so that you can pack appropriately for whatever you're going to take with you. So just getting that figured out is going to be... Um, you could add that to your list too. Like, I believe I can do 12 pages in a day, right? Or 15 pages in a day and then pack for that um, schedule. Um, pretty simple. Post your progress on Facebook. What did you decide? Are you ready to go? Uh, when are you going to your next event? And then we want, I want you to show me what your next event looks like, right? Whether that's just, for some of us, the next event is going to our dining room table. How much easier was it now that you've been through the challenge, now that you've got your things more organized, how much easier was it to put things away? Um, and then when you're done, of course you're get, excuse me, you're gonna enjoy your reward, which is always the key to that. All right, if you have quite, oh, I haven't been paying attention. Let's see, Katie's got anything for me here that, uh, all right, okay, so, Little spoiler, not a huge spoiler. I got this list today. Don't know if I'm supposed to share it with you or not, but here it goes. So we've had quite a few things that have been out of stock that y'all have been asking me about. And this is what is supposed to arrive. Now, I have to preface this by saying, I'm not gonna be here next week. Um, my husband and I are loading up um, his camper and I'm going to be, I'm going to confess something to you. We sold our little motor home. This is a small motor home, but I liked it. I liked traveling in it because he could drive and I could sit at the table and work or lay on the little couch in the bag and read my book or whatever. And it had more space in it. He also has a camper, like a regular cab over on the back of the pickup truck, go anywhere, four wheel drive, get away from civilization, hardcore camper. I don't usually like to go off in that because you know, this might surprise you. I like the fact that the motorhome has a bathroom and a shower right inside the motorhome. So he wants to go on this trip. We sold the motorhome. I said, of course I'll go. I love you dearly. So we are going off in his camper, which he calls the escape pod for two weeks. Here's my confession. My goal in the next two weeks is to completely enjoy the trip with him and also convince him that we need another small motor home for when he travels with me to get my drift on that. So, but bottom line, I won't be here next Tuesday. I might try to do a live from wherever we are just for fun. Uh, for those of you who um, follow my husband on Instagram, you know, he goes to the most amazing places where there are no other people and he takes the most amazing pictures um, he's a wildlife photographer. He recently, I should tell you, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this any either, but his Instagram is Park Kitchings, K-I-T-C-H-I-N-G-S. Um, if you like outdoor photography, even if you don't like outdoor photography, his photography is amazing. What he's been doing, totally off track, um, he found in two nests, a great horned owl nest and a raptor, a hawk's nest out in the desert here. And for the last... I don't know, four or five weeks, he's been tracking and photographing these babies being born. So from the time they were just little chicks in the nest, now the owls are 
out of the nest and wandering around. They're not flying yet, but they're out on the cliffside where the nest is. And um, the hawk baby is also up, like his head is up. And um, so he's getting pictures of like the parent birds coming back and feeding them. It's really cool. So if you like nature photography or whatever, um, that's what he does. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So we'll be in some amazing places. I'll try to share those with you since I'm not going to be in the studio for the next two weeks. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'm only going to miss one Tuesday though. Back to this other sort of, am I supposed to share this? I don't know. This is what's coming in this week. So hopefully by the weekend, everything will be available on the website. London is shaking his head Am at I me. supposed to share this? I don't know. You know the one <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So, buddy bags that are going to be back. Uh, now, they may put them back on the website, and then it'll just be, they'll just be delayed shipping. That's possible. They've done that before because they know they're going to be there. So, um, Teresa, which is what you saw today, the long skinny bag. Uh, Sue, which is the, Sue is the uh, perfect bag for, Sue, Sue, where are you? For so many things, but among them are, okay, I know it's right in front of me. I know it. I just saw it. Am I blind? Sue holds Stampin' Up! Ink pads. There we go. Spit that right out. Uh, so, and, But Sue is the catch-all bag. She's kind of a mini Leanne in that sense. So she really works great for, I'm taking her full of cosmetics in the camper because I have to keep everything really compact in this little camper. Um, so she's a great catch-all bag. Barbara, of course, is designed for the magnetic, close to my heart, ink pads and taller bottles and such. Terry, longer pens. Katja is the other bigger divided bag. Um, the clear lowest tote is back. Yay. Uh, the two inch and the 1.5 inch store and go bags are back. And that's what I use for this type of thing, right? They've been out for a while. So this is a two inch loaded with, um, my alphabet punch. So they're great for large punches and that type of thing. Those are back. And then of course, all the ditto bags are back all four colors of ditto bags and all four colors of the binders are back as well so um there's your little maybe i'm not supposed to say it information but hopefully all those will be available on the website uh by the weekend and um like i said watch your watch your email and um and maybe we can squeeze something special into the email some little coupon code or something oh uh, i have asked for that so we'll see some, you got to ask usually way in advance. And I just did it this morning. So I don't know. We'll see what we get. You can always hope. Okay. I think that's it. Um, always, if you have other questions, you can post them up on Facebook. You can email us customer service at totally dash tiffany.com. And we'll get those questions answered for you. Um, I guess that's it. I just want to say thank you all for joining me for the Get Organized Challenge this year. And I look forward to being back uh, in two weeks talking about something else that's exciting. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but um, I'm going to work on something cool for you. All right. What We're not going to be here next week. So take this opportunity to catch up on your GOC challenges if you have uh -huh. anything that's backlogged. Yes. London is saying you've got two weeks now to finish up any loose ends in the GOC that you haven't finished yet, which is perfect. And then please post up about it, post up about what, what was hard for you, what was easy for you, what the results were. And we're always, always, always looking for new ideas for products and for, for cover for things to talk about in the GOC, or it's a lot of times new products come out and I don't even know that they're out there. And so, People need help organizing those, and I really rely on you guys to share that with me. One more thing, an update on your photo printer. Oh, um, I haven't done anything about the photo printer, except I read up a couple of people did make suggestions, which I appreciated, but that is going to be London's job. Well, I'm going to research the photo printer. Yeah, that's his job. He's a good tech guy, that kind of stuff. Shouldn't have said anything. I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like doing that kind of stuff, but he's. that's what kids are for, right? They can handle your tech issues for you. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining me. And I look forward to talking with you more in two weeks. And I'll try to post something up while I'm on the road so you can see where we are and what kind of craziness we're doing. Take care. <laughs>